anybody who knows anything about email will tell you that the best email is no email at all. See, email wasn't designed to be secure, private. In fact, the internet wasn't designed to be secure or private. But email is really important. And most people still use email, business, entrepreneurs, connecting with family, friends, especially the times we live in, digital communication. But the problem with most email is it's more like a postcard than a secure envelope. Meaning prying eyes can see it from all sides. Now the government has a laundry list of things they spy on from your phones to your devices and oh yes, your email. This has become a problem for people worldwide. And here in the United States, you have some options of emails you could use. Now I'm going to talk about some of the best options that you could use and the reasons why you might want to consider it. Now, a lot of people will use big companies like Gmail and for throwaway emails potentially, but Google tracks every single thing you do. And there are some measures you can take to help mitigate some of this tracking, but ultimately Google's going to track everything they can get their hands on every piece of data. And it's going to be under the auspice of marketing. We want to give you a better user experience. We want to help give you targeted ads. We want to make sure your time on the internet is better. And then you've got the government who's going to follow everything you do. No warrants, no wiretaps, not even any probable cause. And they're going to do it all under the name of national security or even more ironic, your security. They're going to keep you safe. They're going to tuck you in at night. So what email can you use? Well, having your own email server is a great option for somebody who's really tech savvy and wants to deal with an email server. But I wouldn't recommend this to most people. And for the few people who are going to do something like this, great, have fun. But for those of us who use email all the time, like myself and probably like you, maybe you run a business and you need secure communications. You can't have everything you do just out there willy nilly for the world to see. And people say, well, if I'm not doing anything wrong, what do I have to hide? It's not about hiding. It's about the right to privacy. It's about your right to be private. It's about your right to be anonymous if you want to. So what are some email services you can use? Alternatives to big giants like Gmail which while it is nice that Gmail is big and has a huge user base and you can kind of hide in the needle in the haystack, they can easily search through whatever they're looking for. Edward Snowden said when they're spying on everyone, they pretty much, you know, can pinpoint and target no one. And this remains true. And that's the unfortunate thing is they're not doing it for you. They're doing it for them. So one email that I would like to talk about first is mail fence. Now, we need an email that has end-to-end -end encryption and is open source. MailFence is a really good option and it is open source. It is end-to-end -end encrypted and they do have a free plan. So I recommend you check it out, see if it works for you. You can, a free plan. They also have paid plans, so you can check those out as well. I've used MailFence for a while and it's not bad. It's not my favorite option, but it's not bad. But what you need to understand when it comes to email is if my email is Cody loves poker at gmail.com and I decide, you know what? I don't want to use Gmail. I want to use fast mail. Or I want to use outlook or I want to use mail fence. Then I can't take my email with me. I can't take Cody loves poker. Let's say at gmail.com to the next place. I could have Cody loves poker at fast mail maybe, or at, uh, you know, one of these other mail providers at mail fence. But that's a new email address. So the first thing you need to understand is you need to have your own domain for your email. So if my email is Cody at CodyHawk.com, you don't know where my email is hosted. And if I have Cody at CodyHawk.com because CodyHawk.com is my website and that's my email and I'm using Fastmail and Fastmail kicks me off and I decide to go to the mail fence then there's no real interruption in service. Maybe a couple hours while I migrate over to another, another provider. So the first thing you need to do is have, and even if you don't have a personal website, you don't have a business, come up with a domain name. You can get them for really cheap at GoDaddy or whatever provider you want to get your domain register at and have 
whatever you want it to be. And that way, if you have your own, I could have Cody at CodyHawk.com. I could have, you know, banking at CodyHawk.com, bills, support, hello, uh, you know, video. Like I could have anything I want, any aliases I want, and they could all be under one, uh, you know, so I'm not just giving. I could have different emails easily. So MailFence is a good option. They have a free plan and they are end-to-end -end encrypted. The service that I use though, there's two services that I use. One's Tutanota. Now Tutanota is also in Germany. Now it's debatable, okay? Because some people say, well, Tutanota is in Germany. And while that is got under American uh, borders and laws, if you think the United States cares about hacking into any other country in the world, whether it's Germany, China, UK, they don't care. They don't care. Well, what's going to happen? There's no consequences. None of these countries are going to start a war with the United States. They know better. So what's going to happen? Nothing. Also, they can put pressure on a lot of these countries and make them turn things over. Well, Tutanota being encrypted, they've got such great security that you can't even reset your password. You have to, you have to know your password. Uh, you look at the end-to-end -end encryption. You look at you can actually encrypt your message and have a, an unlock key for the user so you could take a second step of encryption, which is really nice. And, you know, you look at you look at a lot of email providers that say they have this great service, but when you actually break them down, uh, you might as well write your email on the side of your house. It's like having a billboard with everything you're saying on it. Well, Tutanota is a great option. They also have a free plan, which I think is really important, but they have several paid plans. Now, I use a paid plan for Tutanota, and I can't recommend them enough. I think it's a phenomenal e email service. And it is one of the three email services that I personally use, with the exception of Gmail, because I think everyone has Gmail accounts, but I don't use them for anything uh, viable. In fact, I don't even log into Gmail anywhere except for my office. I don't have any Google stuff on my phone. I don't have, but I do have a Gmail, just like most people, and I do log into it from my office because, you know, quite frankly, if you have a dedicated wired network, that's the best place to log in to the most. Uh, to the company who's probably the closest tied with the three-letter agencies. So, it's a great option. And I highly recommend to know I highly recommend you check out these different uh, services. I've used them for a long time, and they pretty much have a tier for everyone, including a free tier, which I think is really important, so you can have quality email. Now, all these emails have a free tier, which is worth checking out, setting up an email, seeing if it works for you. You're definitely gonna have a much better user experience and quality email than you're used to having if you use some of these other email providers. But more than that, you're going to be able to kind of see what it's like to use secure messaging a little bit better. Now, again, email is not perfectly secure. There's no such thing. But it's a lot better than these big free email providers because as everyone always says, when something's free, you are the product. And Tutanota doesn't have ads, so they're not worried about marketing to you, scanning your emails like Gmail and the other big providers. They're focused on the community supports them by buying their product, so it's a great product. And the top one I'd recommend is ProtonMail. Now, ProtonMail is a very good email provider. It is also in Swiss, which is great. It's outside U.S. jurisdiction. But do you really believe that the United States doesn't have outside United... There's nothing outside the United States jurisdiction. Let's be real here. They have no uh, care for any other country's laws at all. If you think that they won't crack a Swiss company, well, you know, you might, uh, you might have drinking a little too much of the Kool-Aid because unfortunately they will do whatever they have to do in the name of national security, even if it's international incidents, because they know the consequences are pretty much null. And uh, there's really nothing these, these countries can do. And if they try, it's going to be a lot worse for them than it will be for the U.S. And the U.S. could just give them a little kickback if they get caught. Hey, we'll give you a little added protection, added military. Well, here, here's a couple billion. Go, go, go back to sleep. Like, it doesn't matter. That said, I think ProtonMail is a pretty good mail provider. And they're the other mail provider I use. So I said I use three. I do use FastMail. FastMail is not recommended on this list. I don't recommend them for most people, but there is some convenience and I have been using them for a long time. So I do use them for one of my businesses. And uh, are they the most secure? No. Would I recommend them? No. Not to most people. I'd recommend Tutanota or ProtonMail. Now, which do I recommend out of the two? Honestly, to me, those two companies are almost the exact same. They're neck and neck and I have a paid plan with both of them and I highly recommend. Uh, MailFence is great as well. 
but it's just not the provider for me and so I don't I don't typically use them but Mailfence is also a really good provider but in a world where the government is spying on you at all times and you may be thinking, well, I didn't do anything wrong, so I got nothing to hide. And you're correct. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm a taxpayer. I'm an entrepreneur, a business owner, a father of four. I didn't do anything wrong either. But just because you didn't think, do anything wrong doesn't mean you need to give up your right to privacy. That's like saying, I'm going to give up my right to free speech because I don't have anything to say. You better keep that right for when you do have something to say. And when you, while you may never have anything to quote-unquote hide... Doesn't mean you want everything out there, your personal address, where you live, uh, if you have a business or a job. I mean, nobody knows where I live, not even my own mom. If she comes into Las Vegas, I'll rent a hotel suite and here, let's hang out. But really, nobody really needs to know where I live. Almost nobody has ever been to my house. Uh, the reason is, why would they? Why would I share where I sleep? I would rather rent a place or go to my office and I can have people there. And then uh, it's more private where I live. It's tucked away. My house is in a, a land trust. You couldn't look up my name and find anything about me. All the information about me is misinformation. I create misinformation. This is really important. So same thing with your email. You might have nothing to hide like me, but the reality is it doesn't mean everything about you needs to be plastered all over the internet. And so it's something worth thinking about. And these email services are a good start. Email is one small piece of the puzzle, but it's an important piece because it is one of the main ways people communicate. It's in the top two to three ways people communicate, depending upon what age demo. The older demo still uses the telephone a little bit more. The younger demo uses messaging a little bit more. And email is usually second to both of those, depending upon what generation you fall in. Over 40 typically still trends to the phone a little bit, although you are seeing more text message. Under 40 definitely tends more to my generation where more text message or messaging apps. So anyway, I just want to talk about that today. I wanted to kind of break down what you should be looking at when it comes to email and maybe starting to migrate over your email service. Now, if you already have Gmail or God forbid, one of these other <laughs> Yahoo <laughs> Or, uh, you know, AOL, I, I literally still see people email me with AOL. I've had people email me with MSN. I see people email me with like Verizon or like their carrier. <laughs> uh, if you, if for whatever reason you have one of those emails, I recommend you, you know, start migrating. Even if it's a process, start migrating your stuff away from that because it's a very bad option and it's something worth looking at. But ultimately you got to make your own decision. I don't have any affiliate links to any of these companies. I'm just giving recommendations because it's a question I get asked all the time. Have an amazing day. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are putting out videos every single day and I'll see you guys in the next video.